Greetings, friends of the original Shepherd's Rod message, and welcome. I'm Brother Eric, Publishing Director for UPA7.org Worldwide. I'm here today to announce a discovery that was brought to our attention of another example of uh, modernist in our midst corrupting or altering the original Shepherd's Rod message, which creates a big reproach. So today we're going to show you the details and so you can understand what to do and how to respond to this. So we invite you, come on in and let's look at the evidence and see what to do about it. So once again, this is a production of UPA7.org and we're going to look at this new exposure of unfortunately another counterfeit Davidian study chart. And we're going to find out what that is, but we got to ask some really fundamental questions about what the Bible says, because we want to be students of the Bible. So the first question is, what day was the Passover lamb slain? You're going to see how this is really a crucial question. Next, who authorized modernist Davidians to make a large chart from the image that is found in answer book number three, page 12. So we're going to see what that is. And then ultimately, what course of action should wide awake Davidians take in regard to this new discovery of a corrupted chart? So we'll begin with this text for meditation. It comes from Symbolic Code, volume nine, numbers one to 12, page 19. It reads, let it be immediately understood, however, that unlike those who openly affirm their modernistic views, the Seventh-day Adventist modernists loudly and blindly repudiate all such and insistently profess to stand on the fundamentals of Seventh-day Adventism, although gradually and quietly they slip further and further away from them. This insidious variety of modernism and the gradual new modeling of the denomination's fundamental principles is heartbreaking evidence that those at its helm are modernists. But their seeming innocence of the fact and their denial of it make exceedingly difficult our helping them without our efforts being misunderstood. And to fix guilt for starting the drift away from the heaven-established fundamentals of the faith today is as impossible as to trace down the first Jewish teacher who put in the place of a thus saith the Lord a thus saith himself or someone else. So Brother Hadif is talking about the problem of modernism in the Seventh-day Adventist Church and its insidious nature because these professed modernists, or modernists who remodel the fundamental beliefs of the church uh, repudiate such claims. They claim, oh, they're standing for the fundamentals. Is it possible that we have modernists among us as professed Davidian seventh day Adventists? And the answer is absolutely. We've documented this in many prior videos about changing the publications and the artwork of the Shepherd Rod message. So we've got several videos. You can check a link in the description box below for a couple examples of those. But we're going to look at another unfortunate case of that that was brought to our attention here recently about one of the charts that's being used by some of the major Davidian associations based in the United States. So what are we looking at here? We're looking at this chart, the sacred year and its main fees. So we got two samples here. One of them is a tampered alteration, a corrupted modernist version, and one of them is the original. So they look similar, but if you look more closely, there are an error one in, in one of these. And so the one on the left comes from the modern New Waco Association. The one on the right is based on the original illustration in answer book number three, page 12. So what's this problem that came to our attention? And it's right here. We're going to zoom in on the area where we've got the 
major error. So this chart from Waco, answer book three, page 12, somebody brought to her attention. And I said, is this a problem in terms of what the Bible says? And what we're talking about is you look at this sacred calendar year, starting with the first month, you've got the days being numbered. 10 days, 15, 16, 18, and 21, and so forth. And then various events along that timeline. And in the particular case we're here we want to focus in is on the phrase, the lamb slain, and right there by that red arrow, and next to the letter or the word the is an arrow that goes and goes from left to right and then turns and points up to the number 15 on the bottom of this wheel, if you will. And that begs the question, is this biblically correct? Was the lamb slain on the 15th day? It's clearly sh indicating that in this illustration. If we look at charts from other associations, Mountdale, here's a copy of their chart, large chart, which we have in our possession. If you look at the same area, it shows the same thing. The lamb slain, arrow points, to the 15th day. Hmm. If you go back further in time, the predecessor to Mountdale was the Yakaipa Association that existed from 1974 up until they merged with Mountdale in 1986. And if you look at their rendition of this chart image, you look at the red arrow, same thing. So we got this legacy, if you will, this lineage, starting with Ukaipa and going on to Mountdale, and then Waco splits from Mountdale in 1991. So they all inherit this same illustration. So what's the problem here? I hope you're thinking about what the Bible says, because that's where somebody noticed there's a problem. In comparison, here's the original image. It's not a large chart. It's just the illustration from answer book number three, page 12. And we've located several copies of the original, and this is the actual image in there. And so this is digitally scanned and expanded to put on the screen. And if you look at this one, there are differences. And we're going to zoom in on the next slide. Now, if somebody's really keen on typography, that is the shapes of the letters and the numbers, you can clearly see that this chart is different than the other ones. The other ones are versions. They're not photographic reproductions. So if we zoom in on this area where the lamb was slain, we notice the arrow there pointing not to a number 15, or not even to the 15th day, but to a period of time in the 14th day, just before the 15th day. So towards the end of the 14th day. That's clearly where that arrow is pointing. So that one is different than these other versions. And you look by the arrowhead, next to it is a, looks like a blob. And the reason for that is because that's the printing process, you know, on those tracks, you know, they were zinc printing plates that you lose some resolution, especially as the plates begin to wear over time. So you lose some of that fine detail. Uh, this is the best quality we could find from an original track. But you look at the shape of that blob, it's not just the artifact. You begin to ask the question, well, what is that really representing? You look, you know, to the left and the right along the bottom of the wheel, you see numbers like you start the first month. You get the vernal equinox and you go from left to right. You move over, you see the number five, and then you go over farther and you see 10. It's kind of blobbed out, but you can clearly make out it's 10. And then you move over and you get to this one here, the lamb is slain and that blob. And you ask the question, if that's a number, what number would it be? And you look at the shape, and it's clearly, you look on the left-hand side, it's pointed. It looks like the number four, not the number five. 
So that's the best quality evidence we can get from an original track. And it's clearly different than these charts used by Waco and Mountdale in Salem. So how do we resolve this? Well, we got to go to the Bible. And the actual references are given in the chart. Anybody would know this. Exodus 12, verses 3 to 6. So let's just read it. It says, verse 3, Speak ye to all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for a house. Verse 4, And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next Unto, unto his house, take it according to the number of souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your count for the lamb. Verse 5, your lamb shall be without blemish, and male of the first year, ye shall take it out of the sheep or from the goats. Verse 6, here's the key verse. And ye shall keep it until the fourteenth day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it when in the evening. So it's very clear from Scripture that the lamb for the Passover was set aside on the 10th day and they kept it until what? The 14th day of the month and they killed it in the evening toward the end of the 14th day. That's plain as day. And when you go back and look at those charts, the original clearly depicts that. It does not point to the 15th day. So we've got a blatant case of an error being introduced into these modernized or man-altered charts being used by Salem, Mountaindale, and Waco. Now, we can confirm this just from a basic internet search. What do modern-day Jews say? Um, this is a reference, website shown. The Passover lamb was slain toward the end of the 14th day of Nisan at 3 p.m. In the afternoon, three hours before sunset, before the end of the day, by Bible reckoning. And then this reference from the Jewish Encyclopedia says, It, referring to the lamb, was then prepared and roasted during the three hours yet remaining of the 14th day, with the 15th day beginning at 6 p.m. So this is all typically correct. These are facts that Jewish people know. Any Christian that knows their Bible would know that. So how is it that this error got introduced into a chart that professed Davidians are showing to the world? Hmm, we've got a problem here. Some might be dismissive. Oh, it's not a big deal. Well, friends, any alteration of God's word is a big deal. The details matter. If the Bible says any man that tampers, you know, takes away a jot or tittle of God's word will be in serious trouble. So what are some of the facts, conclusions that we can arrive from this discovery? Well, one, Brother Haddaf never authorized the publication of the sacred year image found in answer book number three page 12 as a large chart this came sometime after his death the earliest version that we could document it came from yukaipa so that's fact number one brother if you look at the large charts published at old mount carmel there were 18 of them if you look at the small hunter charts that arose during the hunting campaign, 1953-54, there were 20 charts. None of those, because we have digital versions of all those that came from Dudley Goff, and we have a video to document that. But of those 20 charts, small hunter charts, none of them included the sacred year and its feasts. None. So, it's clear that somebody took it upon themselves during the 1970s to take that image, blow it up, and revise it. An unauthorized alteration from inspiration. Who did it? We don't know. We have our suspects. Could be the very people that have changed other charts. We have documented evidence of 
two individuals that should be suspects, Don Adair and his unlawful second wife, Wanda Bloom. They have both been documented tampering with the rod message, the artwork in particular, of the tracks and the charts. So they're high suspects, but they're both past. But that's really secondary to the real issue that they're wrong. So these unauthorized sacred deer charts published by Salem Mount Down Waco and used and made visible on the internet contain blatant biblical error which cast a reproach on the original shepherd's rod message. And why is this important? Because this is the type of thing that our enemies of the rod message, the leaders in the Seventh-day Adventist Church, will grab onto and say, these people are false, their doctrines are corrupted, and they will use this as evidence. And it's so plain that anybody could see it. So this is why this is a big deal. Recognizing this reality, wide awake and faithful Davidians should immediately reject all counterfeit shepherd's rod charts, including this one, and return to the originals. In terms of large charts, there's 18 originals, and we have published those for years. They've been uh, stolen from our website, used by other counterfeit associations, but those are out there. Everybody can see them for themselves. So that's the remedy. Get back to the foundation and reject these modernist revisions of God's work through his prophet, Brother Haddaf. And finally, since there's no authorization to make a large chart from the image on Answer Book 3, page 12, the wise and prudent should leave it alone and use only the original image in their PowerPoint presentations, just like I did today. So, Bible workers, self-supporting Bible workers from UPA 7 can use that image in their PowerPoints for the purposes of study or for illustration or whatever. But let's keep it that way. Stick to the original, but as far as authorizing to change it or to even blow it up and make a chart of it, that's where people get in, tr in trouble. It's presumption. And it leads to big problems. So once again, the call is, let's get back to the foundation, let's get back to the original, and let's reject all of these corrupted modernist versions of the Shepherd's Rod message. So this concludes our presentation. If you have further, further questions, comments on this topic, then please uh, subscribe to this YouTube channel, Universal Publishing Association, for future updates on related topics and news of interest to faithful Davidians. And if you'd like to discuss how to establish an independent Shepherd's Rod publishing house in your area, which publishes only the original Shepherd's Rod message, the only place out there, upa7.org, then please feel free to contact us anytime. Here's an email, phone, you can text us, call us, or contact using this number on WhatsApp if you're in African countries. So, friends, and we also have a website, shepherds-rod-speaks.org, also another one, whyparish.org, where we document this and other things of interest to the message. So, friends, let us stick with the original. Let us follow the truth and shun these modernist versions of artwork and stay true to the original message and cc for man whose breath is in his nostrils. Godspeed.